writing and speaking he is a very good orator he is a formidable speaker you would see a public addresser and he has gone through vistas of books plenty of books have been gone through by him and you will realize when he will address you people so he has a purely academic bent of mind and we shall really enjoy his presence here sir welcome we accord red carpet welcome to you on the premises of pvss dab public school kodarma i am in welcome to the other distinguished judge come guest speaker sri manoj kumar singh who is a renowned journalist of times of india and he too has the same so same sort of inclination toward literature and his literary work his teaching work has always been known through the town children you will find yourself very lucky today to be here amongst you both the souls of eminence who have in depth insights not only in literature but in other academic media also you will find that you have left this hall with a lot more knowledge and insights added to your already existing ones children this session of book review is very important you know and keeping in view the significance of book re review mr kumar sathi singh took this initiative pain is taking efforts to make you all go through the books and then come out with the vivacity and elan your mindset and criticality the attitude of just finding out the thing which the author might have missed and also to bring to light the positive side of the contents you know when you are going through the book review you need to highlight the author's name title of the book the relevance of the title publisher and year of publication other than this you have to have ample light throw or to throw on positive as well as some uh, shadow or dark side of the story the contents the theme the contents the relevance and what all that needed to be there what the reader expects the author to be there in the form of the content content if you are finding something they are lacking in the form of characters launching of the characters how the author launched the character one after the other and what the author has made the character speak actually whatever the character speak in the story that remains you know the thought and idea of the author he is everywhere but something distinguishes him from the rest of the authors already writing books and producing books after books is their thought and ideas and knowledge most importantly how the book is accepted by the society so the purpose for which the book has been written if that serves the purpose then that becomes a very hot selling book successful publication successful produce of the author children i'm sure you have gone through the books the books that we shall be listing from you i don't want to go deep into that because this is your aina and i wouldn't intrude in that i would like rather to hear from you you should just be brief i think 2 minutes 30 seconds or 3 minutes by that time you have to conclude you say your finding in the book review it's great that you have got this platform under the direction of mr kumar sathi singh and you people will be really finding your time 
to spare and throw light on the findings of your books, discovery that you found. Children, this platform is the platform to boost your morale, boost your confidence and become the pioneer in the form of literature or literary work. It's not just reading the book and then throwing it aside and then remaining silent for some months, some years, some days. If you have completed one book, just take the other in your hand. Go through that and try to go through the contents and the ways the books are written. When you are analyzing the book's content, you should also be seeing not only the contents, themes and ideas, characters and central points of the chapters. Rather, you should also throw ample light on structures, lucidity and what kind of compactness is there in the language. The language, lucidity, you know, some writers become very famous like Premchand in Hindi. Why? Because he reached the very heart of the people, struck the very code of the mind of the common people and therefore he became very popular. He wrote on topics which were very relevant and needed in the society. So he was very accepted. Same thing should be there. Language should not be very cliche, very crisp, not very complex and difficult to understand. It should have lucidity and compactness at the same time. Compactness means loose writing, loose sentences should be there. They should logically be connected. So if you are willing for writing the books and never know, you never know when you need to write the books, maybe something strikes your mind and you people begin this enterprise and you endeavor to write it. So just go on keeping all those things in mind. I will always keep you in touch with both of these personalities. They will regularly be in our church and they will guide you from time to time. I rest assured. Rest assured. Children, writing is important. When you write, you look for ideas. When you write, you look for words, appropriate sentences, appropriate collocations that go together. And also, you let your mind go free, think free, and you try to reach the very final points which might ever have escaped the thought and ideas and mind of other people. So, be a very intelligent reader, very smart reader, read the contents, read many more books other than those that you have read today because the world is full of books. Have principal books and this will add to your knowledge. Gradually you will get inculcated with the knowledge, get inculcated with the habit of reading more and more books without taking much time. I take this opportunity once again to accord red carpet welcome to both the eminent guests, guest speakers and distinguished judges on the premises of PVSS DV Public School Kodama. Sir, welcome to you and at the same time, however there is formality of vote proposing, I would also like to extend my heartfelt thanks to you people for taking time out of a busy schedule and being us, being with us and encouraging the morale, patting their uh, attitude and children's uh, morale in the form of your presence. So your august presence will go an extra mile in making the students even read more and more and express the things that they have prepared for. Thank you very much sir and I wish all the participants who are here all the very best. Thank you very much. May you, may you have a very fruitful and insightful session. Great. Hey everyone, esteemed chief guests, honorable principal sir, and worthy teachers, and all my dear friends. Today, I rather of standard A A is here to share my views on the famous book, the book Blue Umbrella. The book Blue Umbrella is written by Ruskin Bond. Amongst all the Ruskin Bond books, the book Blue Umbrella has so far gathered immense applause from readers and critics alike. This is a short novel, but the kind of moral lesson it teaches.
teaches to us are simply overwhelming. This is the story of Benya, a poor little girl who lives with her mother and an elder brother. One day, she takes her pendant off with a beautiful blue umbrella. The blue umbrella is so much beautiful that it soon becomes a topic of conversation for the villagers. The blue umbrella By the blue umbrella that he wanted to uh, wanted to own it at any cost. So he hired a boy for stealing the umbrella, but the boy was caught and he revealed the name of Ramurosa. At last, Vinaya uh, Vinaya uh, uh, donated the blue umbrella to Ramurosa. Through this story, Ram, uh, through this story, Ruskin born instill a sense of childhood, uh, instill a sense of kindness among childhood. It is an amazing day for all. Thank you. On the other hand, the people, on the other hand, the city people, 
the CT if people catches her attention in catches her attention pendant in her leg. The pendant consists of leopard claw, which is considered mascot in the hilly villages. The Vinya, the Vinya treats her pendant with the blue umbrella. A shopkeeper, Ram Bharusa, was so much attracted by the blue umbrella that she want to she want to own it at any condition. So he hired hires a boy from neighborhood village, neighborhood village, and steals it. The boy became loyal to him. The, suddenly, the boy caught by her young elder brother, Vinaya, Vichy. The boy reveals Ram Bharosa's name behind the screen. Screen. Okay, well then. Uh, next from class B. You know it. Whatever you know, you learn it. Whatever you learn, you will apply it on your own life. A very warm good morning to one and all present here. Today I have the legend of class A B. Going to present a book review, which is based on the blue umbrella, which is written by the Rusty boy. When we hear his name, a lot of stories goes to our mind, like the look at the roof which is one of the most best novel of this story. But today, I am going to present a book review, which is The Blue Omelette. This. This. And by walking, she found a very bright blue umbrella. This umbrella belongs to the tourists who come there for the picnic. This is the very first beginning part of the whole story. When you will read this story, you will not find that you are ready. You will find that you are watching everything by your eyes. That nice is this story. In this story, the main focus was given to the moral values. But we will find it at the last part. In the last part of the story, there was a shopkeeper named Ram Bharasa. He has a servant, Rajala. He told his servant to see that umbrella. He, he do as far as instructed by his owner, but while stealing, he was caught by the villagers. Now, everybody wants, hates Ram Bharosa, that he can do that thing for an umbrella. But what the villa do, uh, do is really, really very surprising. He goes to the uh, his shop and take that umbrella, give it to her and take some candy and goes away. Ram Bharosa was extremely happy that he had that umbrella. But he was upset too that villagers will they call him theft again. That he was he ran away and take that umbrella to her and give it with a very uh, bad mind. That, that what Vinya says is really very surprising. She says that I have given that umbrella to you and this is the part what I like the most. This, this is the part when I uh, when the Binya gave that umbrella to her, the, the umbrella that he cannot live without him. If this story tells us about the moral values which is degrading today's, so in today's society. In today's society, the moral values are uh, degrading. The blue umbrella is a small story, but it delights full ball. I hope you like this story as I like. Thank you and have a great day. Umbrella isn't everything, isn't it? A very beautiful morning to everyone present here. Today, I, Madhika Shri, is here to present my views on the book, The Blue Umbrella by Riskin Bond. Ruskin Bond is an outstanding contemporary artist of India with British descent. He wrote many novels as well as his famous for children book. You know what? People in today's society do not have a matter of possessiveness towards something that is not of them. And The Blue Umbrella is one such story. This beautiful novella proves that how a matter of possessiveness and materialism shows you repent of society and makes you totally lonely. It is a matter that tells you that how humanity is still present in the hearts of people and this story proves to be an asset to all of you. So 
The story starts with the main character of the story, that is Binya. She is a very young girl who believes in the matter, and she she is a very pure-hearted girl who, in return, gives a favor to many people. This story shows that how how the matter of possessiveness are present in this today world. The matter of jealousy and envy in today's world is ruining our total lives. And this is making our life a worthless time. And this is not only wasting our time, but it's also creating a humor in our mind that this is not done. The story is very simple yet very educative. The story teaches us the very modern values that teaches us that how people come from far away and it those people to be a part of the society. The best example of the story is Ram Bharusa, who just wanted a matter of possessiveness and took it towards the else part. And this not only contains with us, but also tells us that how, how important the lesson of humanity and love are still present in the earth. And this story not only brings up your mind and your set to another part, but it also gives you an asset to be a free person and always be kind to everyone. And as the story progresses, this is totally a humorous story that be a part of it. That's all from my side. Thank you. Yeah, it's like a great flower. A great flower that sprouts upon the hills of Kharwa. Top of the morning to you all. I am Niharika of Standard 8C standing in front of you all to share a book review of Blue Umbrella by Ruskin Bond. Ruskin Bond is one of the greatest author of the Indian history. He has wrote a lot of books for children. That is why he is known as children's writer. This book was published in the year 1974. The main characters of this book are Binya, Biju, Ram Bharase and Radha Ram. The Blue Umbrella is a short book which focuses on the life of people living in hills of Bharwal. This book actually depicts that person couldn't be happy with a thing. This book gives us the important perspective lesson that when we have when we have kindness in us, we can do great to this world. So, the Blue Umbrella is a short story about a little girl named Binya. One day, while herding her cows back home, she came across some villagers. They had a beautiful blue umbrella. It was really fascinating. Binya fell in love with that umbrella at first time, and she acquired it in exchange of a lucky leopard pendant. Now, Wherever she goes, she carries that umbrella everywhere and it became the talk of the town. Everyone was jealous of it, particularly Ram Bharuse. As he was one of the richest men among the villagers and does not want anything to have to the villagers that he does not have. So he decided to own that possession by any means. One day, on the convenience of Ram Bharuse, Rajaram tries to steal that blue umbrella and on being caught to save his own skin, he blames it to Ram Haruka. After having to all this situation, Vinaya decided to give that blue umbrella to Ram Haruka. In return, Ram Haruka also showered the kindness by returning a claw pendant to her. In this story, how we see that kindness always attracts kindness? We see the most surprising moment of the story. I like the story very much. I like the simple writing style of the author which makes us cozy by reading. By reading this book, student can see that how selfishness and materialism destroy our society and how forgiveness and humanity benefits our society through Binya and Ram Harusa. Thank you so much. <laughs>
A lot of human behavior is described plainly. For the people who have seen the world, how we can destroy our own happiness, our relation with others, and our sometimes our own soul. Last but not the least, the book cover was appealing with a colorful sketch of a little girl holding a blue umbrella, and also the title could not be better than this. Thank you and have a great day ahead. We are 
confident and to tackle with all the problems of our life confidently. Now, I'm going to share my experience with you and that is, my grandma usually lives out of station and she doesn't live with me. But after reading this book, I felt that she is with me and reciting her beautiful tales to me. So I suggest you to read this wonderful book and to feel that you are with your grandma and listening to her beautiful tales. And that's all from my side. Thank you so much. Good morning everyone. I am Deepak and first of all, thank you. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share my thoughts on the book Grandma's Bag of Stories which is written by Sudha Murthy. So, let me first tell you something about Sudha Murthy. Sudha Murthy was born in 1950 in North Karnataka. She has written seven novels, uh, four technical books and three travelogues and two collections of short stories. Uh, her stories deals with her stories deals with common lives, human uh, human values such as charity, kindness, and self realization. Now let's talk about the reviews of the book. Grandma's Bag of Stories is a wonderful book. Is a wonderful book. It is like a treasure chest full of great stories. In this book, you will find the stories that is that are easy to understand and filled with great and filled with great lessons. In this book, the main character grandma has a special bag that holds the stories for all kinds of situations. The stories in this book are about being kind, honest, and working hard. I I think every student should read this book. It is not just about entertainment, but it also teaches us many valuable lessons about life. After reading it, I felt like a better person. This book reminds us that the stories can help us become better people. So, if you want to read a book that is easy to understand and filled with great lessons, then Grandma's Bag of Stories by Sudha Murthy will be the, will be the best choice for you. Thank you and have a nice day. Good morning to one and all present here. This honorable principal said, esteemed jury members, respected teachers and all my dear friends. Today I Nagmi is here to deliver a book review on the book Grandma's Book of Sto Bag of Stories. It is a book which is full of engaging stories like monkeys and mice, scorpions and hidden treasures, princesses and onions. The book the book the story starts with the grandmother, Ajji, waiting for her grandchildren to arrive on the summer vacations, while other pair of siblings, Anand and Krishna, had already arrived. The fondness and craziness of the children to listen to Ajji's stories is what is described in the first chapter of this book. As the story progresses, this book will take you from a real world to the world of fantasies and fiction. The book Grandma's Bag of Stories is a very wonderful book. The uh, values like farming, farmers, village life, birds and animals by walking on the, on the paddy fields with their grandfather and the moral values, culture and the uh, virtues of life by listening to Ajit's stories. Last but not the least, I would conclude my book review by saying that the author has no, no doubt done a very wonderful book by blending the household chores and uh, by influencing the family bondings and by impressing that how, what is wrong and what is right. I highly recommend you that this should, book should be a part of your kids library. Thank you and have a great day. Esteemed Chief Guest Honorable Principal Sir, worthy teachers and all my lovely friends. I extend my heartfelt morning to one and all present here. 
This is the Jashmi saying of standard 9b is here to present a book review of a very marvelous book, Grandma's Bag of Stories by a very marvelous author, Sudha Murthy. Grandma's Bag of Stories is a beautiful collection of interesting stories to share with kids from the pen of very popular author, Mrs. Sudha Murthy. The book will take you through the memory lane of your childhood days spent at your grandparents' home. Sudha Murthy's Grandma's Bag of Stories is simply wonderful and full of engaging stories of monkeys and mice, hidden treasures and scorpions, kings and chiefs, princesses and onions. Sudha Murthy, the, the book starts with the grandmother commonly called Ajit in the book, eagerly waiting for her grandkids, Raghu and Meenu to arrive for summer vacations. The other pair of siblings, Krishna and Anand had already arrived. The fondness and craziness of the kids for their Aji is what is narrated in the first chapter of the book. The book will take you from the real world to the world of fantasies and fiction. It will also tell you about the moral values, culture and different virtues of the life. Bajji's stories were simply based on values of courage, moral values, intelligence, kindness and foresight. The goal which can be achieved through courage and determination, our outlook, perception of things and a lot of other emotions uh, and values are discussed as well. The author Sudha Murthy has no doubt done a wonderful job of highlighting family bondings. I recommend you, I recommend you to read this book once because trust me, it's a wonderful mix of tradition and modern. Thank you and have a fantastic day ahead. Good morning to one and all present here. I am Anna Kumar of Standard 9C, present here to express my views on the book Grandma's Bag of Stories. But before getting any further into this topic, can you guess the author of this book? Yes, it's the famed writer and philosophist Mrs. Sudha Murthy, who is well known for her excellence in both English and Kannada literature. She has done her MPA in computer science and now is the chairperson of the Infosys Foundation. She has written many novels, tableaus, non-fiction pieces, a collection of short stories and is also the recipient of the Padma Shri Award, Padma Bhushan Award as well as the Narayan Award for literature. Now, moving to the book, Grandma's Bag of Stories is a collection of 22 short stories uh, but the most significant part of this book revolves around four siblings who uh, visit their grandparents' place in their summer vacations. The four of them were Raghu, Meenu, Anand and Krishna. The, the children played, quarreled and had a lot of fun with each other. They also spent their times with grandmother and grandfather whom they called Aji and Aja respectively. Aji knew a whole bunch of stories and so listening to her stories every day, especially in the late afternoon, became the best part of the children's summer vacations. Aji told them the stories not only to entertain them but also with the intention of inculcating their moral values and virtue of life. The children also got along with their Aja and explored many things about the village, their culture and farming activities. This all continues until the day arrives when the children's summer vacations are finally over and they head back to their own places waiting eagerly for their next summer vacations. Now, this book as a collection of short stories is a very unique one because aside from the 22 stories in this book, there is another story running parallel to these stories which is the story of the children's amazing summer vacations with their grandparents. Now, which makes this book uh, even more lively and interesting to read. Now, even in the process of storytelling, the involvement of our main characters is no less. All the stories in this book are very interesting and fun to read and also hold a valuable message. Overall, this book uh, takes the readers from the world of real world and the world of fiction and fantasies. Now, I'd like to conclude this by a saying that one who is a leader today is a leader tomorrow. Thank you and have a marvelous day ahead. Good morning to one and all present here. Today, 
I Ari Khan from class 9C is here to throw light over on a very marvelous book known as Grandma's Bible Story. This book is written by Shudha Murthy, a Padrushi awardee, Indian educator, author, and philanthropist, Mrs. Shudha Murthy. She was born on 19th of August 1950 in Sri Lanka. She, she has a very great name in the field of English and Federal education. Now let's come to the book. This book is really a bag of 22 short stories in it. Here there is a main story which revolves around four siblings, Raghu, Meenu, Krishna and Anand. These children, these children went to their grandma's place for spending summer vacation. They played and enjoyed a lot there. But the most vital part of this main story, all the part of this whole book, is that every day in the late afternoon, their grandmother, whom they called Alji, told them new stories which they enjoyed the most. The stories were full of fantasies and fictions, of forests, of caves and many more things. I would highly recommend this book for story lovers and children. Every story in this book inculcates some moral values to it, to the readers. This book has a very unique way of storytelling as this book has its own speaker as Alji, as well as listener, as the children, which makes the book reading more interesting, relatable and nostalgic. This book also promotes the traditional way of storytelling by the grandparents to their children. The stories, the life back of the kings uh, and the, uh, when Yama called and the kingdom of fools became my favorite. This book is a very nice one for story lovers. Also, this book has a very perfect ending. You know why? Because the last chapter in this book has the title The Unending Story. This chapter will satisfy you for this book. To wrap this up, I would only say that this book is a perfect match for story lovers. Anyone can enjoy it thoroughly. Although good reading is, not, is, is never harmful for anyone, it will always inculcate values to the reader. So be a good person by being a great, uh, by being a great reader. Thank you and have a nice day. I'm sure you see.
the book. Book reading is the manner to change the life and personality of a person. Or good morning, or good morning, honorable judges, honorable principals and worthy teachers, and all my dear friends present here. Today I am coaching. Today I I am coaching of class nine. Day. Present here to review a book named Grandma's Bag of Story. It was written. It was written by a person who sent about it. Next, Sudhamurthy. Although although she was a technical woman. But in spite of that, she is concentrated herself in writing books, novels, short stories. She was a prolific writer. She was a she was a prolific prolific writer, and she knows for his simplicity and humbleness. She writes many novels, short stories, and many technical books, which represent many lower. Many moral values. Now moving to the book. Now moving to the story where the four siblings named Meenu, Raju, Krishna, and Anand went to the Ajis and Aja house for listening the stories of Bags, listening the stories of Ajis, which have a collection of 22 short stories. All are the interesting and magical and fearful and moralful stories, but my favorite are. The doctor and doctor, and the second one is who was the happiest of them all, which represent the which represent the moral values that we not we should not be greedy and be helpful to others. The grandma's bag of story have a signified the the grandma's bag of story have a signified personality. Of really, uh, per personality of moral values, moral values, simplicity, and at at last I would like to say, at last I would like to say that if you have time to spend, if you have time to spend, you must be recommended. You must be recommended this book. The pen is more powerful than the sword. It is. Highly proved by the Samuti. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would like to call our next participant. From the respected and the precious JC members, uh, principals, uh, and all the teachers, and the fellow compassionate friends, myself, Swarupatap Singh from Standard 9, and I am here to present my book review on the book titled Grandma's Bag of Stories on the pen of the famous writer Samuti. Now moving on to the book. The book's genre is fiction, and the main targeted age group for the readers is six to nine year age kids. But make no mistake, as even the adults and elderly can get hooked up by reading this captivating piece of literature. This book will take you through the memorable of your childhood days spent at your great parents' house, while also leaving you with an immense feeling of nostalgia in the process. And in a similar way. The story starts with grandmother Aji waiting for her two grandkids, Raju and Vinu, to arrive for their summer vacations. The other pair of the siblings, Anand and Krishna, had already arrived. The fondness, craziness, and lovingness of the kids towards their loving and affectionate grandmother is what has been narrated thoroughly in the first chapter of the book. Now, as we progress further, the book will take us on a journey from a real world to a world of fantasies and fiction. Where the children learn about village life, farmers, birds, animals, while walking alongside the paddy kids with their grandfather. On the other hand, they also learn about different moral values, cultures, and other life forms of other versions of life forms. So the narrative stories to them by another that their caring and affectionate grandfather. Our uh, these stories is based on a mix of certain values such as intelligence, courage, foresight, which will only make you complete as a person and a better person overall. After they are writing each and every story, the grandmother discusses it with the kids in the next few stories, and this is the fun part. The visualizations the kids went through and the lessons they learned are all discussed in the last section of the book. 
This further increases the curiosity of the readers and creates suspense in their mind to go through each and every aspect of the book with clear detail. Certain visualizations blended into beautiful transitions makes this book visually engaging and appealing, which will only furthermore increase the reading experience. As well as the not to mention the fact that the characters are so lively and imaginable that one can connect to them visually as well as mentally, as if they are the part of the book themselves. Emphasis has also been laid upon the importance of family bondings, as the author has put out a real good job on inserting such qualities. And conclusively, I would say that this book is truly one of the most fantastic short books I have ever read. The language is fun and easy to understand. And we will also improve your vocabulary and literary awareness. And I would highly recommend this to be a part of your kids as well as your own library. Thank you. Describing about his health hazards when he was at very high altitude 
and having some uh, headache and vomiting. The author often uses the author often uses short poems to break the monotony of the prose. At last, Vikram said uses different types. In this book is a real simple realistic mode of uh, his travel log where he deals with his various stages of journey. The book tries to study different that different human interaction with a touch of simple humanity which omits a sense of cultural displacement. Thank you, Anurag Nice Chair. Speak to myself to wander around the world, accumulating things for future nostalgia. Good morning, everyone. Today, I, Nima Rani, I am here to represent my views on the book Heavenly, written by Vikram Seth. From Heavenly, this book is written by Roman Magazine's winner Vikram Singh. He is an amazing author. All of this book was written about 25 years ago, but still it is topical. This is a travel vlog. Here the author shares his experience of traveling by road through Sikhanj, Tibur, Nepal to come back his own country, India. But whether or lost he was, he chose this dangerous route for sake of adventure. He described the people and the places. He mentions that he able to reach each places through hitchhiking and bearing the rivers and climbing the mountains regions. He described Chinese people as kind and warm-hearted. He described he also put insight into the life of Tibetan, which is generally considered as forbidden place of China. He quickly described life way both his monasteries. He described their ways, how they disposed their dead bodies. Generally, we know that Muslims and Christians dispose their dead bodies by burying them, in effect of feeding them to the worms, and partially feed their dead to the vulture. But in Tibet, the case is totally different. Here, people chop the dead bodies, mix with the meal, and feed to the eagle. Sounds crazy. Everything William State explains like a song. But the two things I like most about this book is his viewpoint and his curiosity to know about the place and the culture, the rituals, and his viewpoint. Being an Indian, writing about India and China for an English American audience is an amazing thing. It took time to remedy the differences between the two countries. And last I would say that. This book was quite adventurous to me, and if you are an adventure lover like me, then I recommend you this book. Thank you and have a nice day. It's like a conversation. All books can talk, but only a good book can hear as well. A very listening morning to one and all present here. Today I, Ragini Bhargavi, is standing here to present a book review of the book From Heaven Lake by Vikram Seth. From Heaven Lake by Vikram Seth was written and published in the year 1983. Vikram Seth is a very famous Indian novelist, poet, biographer and travelogue writer. He is also the recipient of awards like Padma Bhushan and the Sahib Academy Award. This book describes his peregrination as he decides to travel to his hometown Delhi, overland via Tibet and Nepal, which is a rather unconventional part of traveling from China to Delhi. During this period, he was studying as an exchange student at Nanjing University from the Stratford University. And with the mind of an explorer and the courage of an adventurer, he decides to take an unconventional path to travel to his hometown. He joins a three-week tour which was organized by his university but not too late realizes that this tour comprised much more of paperwork and taking permissions than actually traveling because of which he decides to travel on his own and thus the book includes two journeys. The first one is his travels through the desert regions of Kalpan, Mount Bogda and Heaven Lake which was organized by the university and the second one is his own journey from Heaven Lake to Delhi. He describes the, the people that he met on the way. Uh, the people were from all the different communities he could ever think of. 
Muslims of the Afans, Tibetans of Lahasa, and each one of them was selfless and very kind to the writer. The best part about this book are the maps, the pictures, and the descriptive writing that has been included in the book. When you read the book, you are able to see that pink sunset, the buzz of flies, and taste that butter yak tea that the writer did. You are able to experience it along with the writer. Moreover, unlike most of the travelogues in which the people are describing the nature, the buildings, here the writer describes the people he met, how they helped him selflessly and left their traces on the heart of the writer. Altogether, reading this book would be a great experience for anyone who wants to know more about the people of China. Thank you. Books are the quietest and most constant of friends. They are the most accessible and wisest of counsellors and the most patient of teachers. A very scintillating morning to everyone. This is Shantika here to present a review on a book from Heaven Lake by the famous author Vikram Sage. From Heaven Lake, Travels through Sinkiang and Tibet is a travel memoir written by the famous Indian author Vikram Sage and was published in 1983. It is a travel log when Vikram goes hitchhiking to China and Tibet on his way to home there. Saint, an exchange student from the Stanford University in 1981, comes to China and begins a part of a three-week long tour. However, China at that time was extremely pulled and restricted and not everyone was permitted to visit the rural and real China. Fed up of this, Saint decides to leave the tour, takes an official bus and visits the his encounters with the local lights over there, the connection he feels with them is beautifully romanticized throughout the whole narration. The richness of the local colors has been spread enchantingly, enhancing the whole reading experience with other. Vikram Saint has a unique way of writing his experiences, creating magic with his words and relishing the nature in a very aesthetic sense. Vikram Saint a writer, novelist and poet was born on June 20, 1952. He has also won many awards such as the Sahitya Academy Award, Crossword Book Award, W. N. Smith Literary Award and also the Great Padma Shri. His style of writing is very different from other writers. Instead of giving a monotonous description of the buildings, monuments and their history, he has focused on to the more human, lively and emotional part of it. The use of photographs in this journey makes the book ever more fascinating to read. Beautifully written, one joins as a companion of state in this journey and not as a reader. This book really inflicts the difference between our lives and that of people living in a country very close to us. This book can surely change our perspective towards the local Chinese people whom we often perceive to be inhospitable. The assimilation of people's feelings, culture and hospitality towards the young foreigner is surely a good thing. I would urge all the readers out there to read this book as it is surely worth the time. Thus, I would like to conclude my words with a quote of Jhumpalini. That's the thing about books. They let you travel without moving your feet. Thank you. is going to describe here the story of Heaven Lake. So let's begin with the introduction of the author Vikram Seth. Vikram Seth is one of the most accomplished and exciting of contemporary writers. He was born on 20th of June 1952 in Kolkata, West Bengal. He is a prolific novelist and poet. And famous for 24 is long ever a suitable boy. He has written several novels and poetry books uh, and also won several awards and honors. Now let's see what about the story of Heaven Lake. 
India. At last, but not the least, I would like to conclude my book review by saying that I, I have learned so many things from this book. The one thing that I have learned the most is we have we have to learn different types of language so that we cannot be face any trouble to dif to communicate or to interact with different peoples at different places. And let me explain this book for its detailed and raw depiction of Asia and Eastern culture. So now it's time for class 11. For standard 11, the prescribed book is Exam Warriors by our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And it is published in 2018. Uh, this book is all about the young students to help them to deal the stress of the exam. So I request Ria Sarma from class 11 commerce to please come and deliver her book review. Preparation for life, but it is a part of life itself, a continuous art. Good morning everyone present here. Today I Ria Sharma got a golden opportunity to express my views on the topic entitled Exam Warriors, a book which was written by Mr. Narendra Modi. In this book, he had stated nearly 25 mantras for students. Mantras prescribes us that how to tackle exams. We should celebrate our exams like festivals, which means one should be happy when exams come instead of getting depressed. It makes our mind free from overloaded tension. Exams only judge our mind preparation, not us. If we look at President APJ Abdul Kalam, he wants to become a fighter pilot, but he fails to clear his exams, but instead of getting depressed, he tried his level best and become a popular scientist. One of the mantra is laughing and laugh out, which means laughter is the best medicine. It diminishes our stress and relaxes mind. We should be a warrior and not a warrior. As like a warrior enters with his weapons in the battlefield, we should also enter in examination hall with our weapon as knowledge. In 1857, Rani Lakshmi Bai went to fight a battle. She faces two options, whether to fight or to be hurt. And she chooses to fight and that's why she is known as one of the greatest freedom fighters. We should gain knowledge with free mind so that it fixes permanently. Do not underestimate yourself, taking an instance of Mr. Sachin Tendulkar. He used to break his records many times and that's why he is entitled as the God of Cricket. Do not think about future and do not remember your past. Just live in present and enjoy it. These are a few of the mantras which tells a leader that how to take exam as a flight of steps to a wonderful future and also tells that good marks are good but not on the cost of good education. It is an honor for me to be able to present in brief the perspective of our admirable Prime Minister Narendra Modi before you all. At last but not the least, the success is determined by your hard work and strong focus to achieve your goal. Thank you and have a fabulous day. Thank you. 
In his book, the chapter, Exams are like festivals, celebrate them, really fascinates me. This chapter said, do not take much stress on yourself. Learn slowly and steadily, so that you can learn it thoroughly and nicely. This chapter can also help us calm down and make us peaceful, so that we can perform well in exams. He has also written that students should focus on preparing for the examination and take it as an opportunity to enhance their career aspects rather than worrying about marks and scores. He has, this book also helps the readers to take exam as a step to a better future. And exam quality must make an impact upon the students of our country because it emphasizes the need for quality education instead of quantity education. It tells the readers that good marks are good, but not in the course of good education. And this is really a concern in India for decades. So at last, I want to say that exam quality is really a very nice book for students, either schools or colleges or anywhere else. They don't learn only to face examination enjoyfully, but they can also learn to tackle the problems arises at the time of examination or by preparing for the examination by 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 yoga, meditation, listening music, etc. That makes you calm, happy, or stressy. And you have a nice day. A big preparation are the history of two writers, and they are to making the history to be all all the writers. Now Nehru is the writing of all the people who are reading here. And Nehru are written so of many books and follow Prime Minister Narendra Modi. They write about the exam for you. This book tells about the students' fears from the examinations. This book offers the visualizing journey and with the guide money to help to take the exam at the level of any individuals. His book has all the writers help to focus on their minds and help to gain their confidence. His book gives the knowledge about the yoga which helps to make concentrations and focus in our mind. This book signifies many specified common details to people. His book, his book exam warrior helps to people and the students to gain the results in the exams, not to worry about the exams. Students have to focus and maintain their confidence with the help of these books. And at last, this book helps to people to get their confidence, not to worry about it. Be the warrior, not the warrior. Thank you. You are in today's age that developing strength you need for tomorrow. A very warm and enchanting morning to worry on present present. Today, I, Ayush Raj of class 11 science, has got this golden opportunity to give a review, express my opinions, my thoughts, my views on the book Exam Warrior, written by none other than our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi. Sir, I have completed my midterm exams just four days ago, and yes, the experience was great. But before getting into exams, I would like to remember some few incidents. First, on 13 September 2023, a 16-year-old girl hanged herself in Kota. Just a month before, a 17-year-old boy took poison and a 17-year-old boy in Tibhar, who was living in Kota, hanged herself. He chose death between death and examination. But wait, why am I telling this to you? The answer is the reason that these all incidents are connected to just one event and that is examination. Sir, today, all the students, all the students who are sitting here, they consider examination as a full and final image of their capacity, their capability and their potential. But let me tell you, this is totally a misconception, a total misconception. Sir, even more than this, the most irritating and most responsible thing for creating anxiety between students is this competitive society. So you being a journalist, being a social activist, know much better about it. He has scored that marks, he has got admission in that college, he has scored first time. And if you don't score good marks, you will not be able to serve. Can you please tell me, after hearing this, which student will desire to pursue his dreams? Is it in the wrong part? Then what's the correct right part? The correct right part is exam is not to break you, but to build you. Not to demoralize you, but to celebrate like a festival. 
say this time we are going with Navratri. They are celebrating and preparing for Navratri and we also prepare for other festivals. In the same way, we should prepare for examination. And to be very honest, this is not my words. This is the beauty of this book. This words, words is written in this book and this message is conveyed by this book. You know soldiers? We all know soldiers. When a soldier faces defeat, he is not called a loser. He is called a warrior. This book was published in 13th, 3rd Feb 2018 and since that time there are 30 publications and translations. Sir, the crux of this book is that don't look your competitor but look yourself, focus on your hard work, not on your own work. So, at last, I would like to end my this conversation with the quote that success is not final, failure is not fatal, but it's a courage which counts. Thank you and hope you all have a nice day.
He has also mentioned that be a warrior, not a warrior. That means students should focus on preparing for their examination rather than worry about their marks. He has also mentioned that students should celebrate the exam the day of examination as festival. He has also mentioned that the parents who are giving their all for their child so he or she can live his life comfortably. And he mentioned that your success is not yours alone. Think about those people whom you have met and whom you have never met in your life. For example, a farmer. At the last, I want to conclude this. This book emphasizes the need of quality education rather than quantity of education. That's all from my side. Thank you so much. Good morning everyone present over here. Today, I am Sarya Sadiq standing in front of you going to share my thoughts on the book Exam Warrior. This is a book written by our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi aimed at guiding and empowering students during the challenging time of exam seasons. We live in a time where examinations play a critical role in our lives. play a critical role in our lives. It is during such time when exam warrior comes in our, uh, comes in our life as a helping hand. Slogan. It embodies an entire philosophy. It encourages us to take examination as an opportunity rather than obstacles. It emphasizes the importance of political mindset, resilience, and effective time management. The Exam Warrior is not just a book, but also, but also a helping hand. The Prime Minister goes beyond the pages, beyond the pages, pages to help students with interactive sessions, radio talks, and even exam helpline. This shows his genuine concern for our well-being and, and for our studies and his commitment to support our success. Through Exam Warrior Initiative, Prime Minister Modi has set a mindset that values not only results but also the learning process. He advocates a holistic education system that nurtures creativity, critical thinking, solving problem skills and many more. His vision for an examination. His vision for an examination. To that uh, exam warrior is an inspiring book. So all my dear friends, he. Morning to one and all present here. This is Kushi Abhishek standing before you to say something about the book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Written by Stephen R. Covey, who is a great American writer and poet. Do you want to know the secret of success? This self-help book shows us how to become more efficient, not only in business life, but in real life too. This book is not just about giving the rules and the principles, but to change the perspective towards the world. This book aims to change the mind in a positive way. So with no further delay, let's talk about all those seven habits. First, be proactive. It is the first and the most fundamental habit of highly effective people. It is more than just taking initiative. Be proactive means to take all the responsibilities of your life. Next, begin with the end in the mind. Who will say that when you take an action, you do it twice? First, when you imagine doing it and second, when you are actually doing in your real life. So the message is here, when you visualize the things in your mind, you are more likely to achieve success. Third, put first thing first. In this, you need to figure out the most important thing that really matters in your life and always give priority to them and put them first. Next, think win-win. See visual benefit in all the interactions and relationships and look for the solution that benefit all the parties involved. Next, synergize. Synergize basically means to put two things together and the outcome is greater than the combined outcome of two other individuals. Here, one plus one can actually be three. So if you work together, you are more likely to achieve success rather than working individually. Next, start with 
Mr. Richard Scobie was an American author, businessman, and educator. This self-help book was originally published in the year 1989. And when I first read this book, I found this to be a great point of reference, not just for learning of business, but also as a great guidance for a personal as well as professional life. As a leadership trainer, I believe Dr. Cohen was way ahead of his time when he published this book. This book has definitely opened a new world of relationship building and leadership. Now, let me briefly summarize the seven habits for you. Habit one is be proactive. I think we all can agree that how we choose to respond to a particular situation will decide what will be its outcome. There is always a choice with us. We can either sit back or let the things happen to us or we can steer the course of events in such a way that will benefit us. Therefore, we should always try to be a cause rather than effect. Habit 2 is begin with the end plan in your mind. Keeping the goals and vision clear in your head will always ensure that you are not varying off along the course which in turn will increase your productivity. Habit 3 is put first thing first. This follows from the second habit which it turns to as a mental creation. In order to implement the end goals, we need to be focused and organized. Habit 4 is think win win. We can definitely agree that it is very difficult to achieve success without assistance of others. Therefore, we should always keep in mind that there is plenty for everyone. And if we offer a win win situation to the people we want to engage, success will naturally follow. Habit 5 is seek first to understand and then to be understood. This habit teaches us the value of building and maintaining healthy relationships both in our personal and professional life. Therefore, we can always try to understand other person first before we are expecting the same from others. Habit 6 is synergize. This habit is all about building a creative cooperation. We should always end aware and seek to acknowledge the efforts that others are putting in a relationship or project. As Dr. Kobe says that whole is always written than the sum of its parts. Habit 7 is self therapy This habit teaches you that you should always take time to recharge yourself otherwise you will lose your effectiveness. And this habit has definitely impacted me the most ever since I read the book. At last, I want to say that 7 habits is a great set to build a foundation based on strong moral values and integrity. Success can be learned and this book is a great way to learn it. Thank you. Good morning, all of you. It's a really pleasure on my part to be here. And uh, I was, you know, very surprised to hear all of you. I must congratulate to get all of you that your performance was super. No one is less than anyone. See, it is a matter of you know, chance that uh, today somebody will uh, set your first mark uh, and somebody will do second. So it is, as you know, that uh, any competition is not the test of your knowledge. It is the test of your love. Isn't it? As you were telling the story of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, that uh, it's a mission war, who is in a mission warrior. So don't feel that you have not done well. Everyone is super. Isn't it? And you are blessed that you are a student of uh, this esteemed school and you are blessed that your principal and teacher are excellent. So my dear friends and students, see, an aeroplane can fly. A bird can fly. Always say, why can't I? A bird can fly, an aeroplane can fly, so I can also fly. Isn't it? So you can fly. It is all a state of mind. Winning and losing is nothing. If you feel 
you are a winner, you are a winner. If you win, you are not a winner, you are not a winner. Okay. Somebody did not perform well, that is not because he or she is not up to the mark. As a matter of fact, it is very tough to speak in public. It's not that easy. When somebody is sitting, he or she may feel that I can speak. But when he or she comes before the podium of the stage, na he'll start trembling, you know. स्टेज पर लोग ऐसे आते हैं ना तो एडर लिविंग का सेक्रेशन होता है आप ये डिस्प्लेट अंडरस्टैंड कर सकते हैं इस बात को और मोंस का सेक्रेशन ऑफ एडर लिविंग स्टार्ट्स यू नो देर इस यू नो यू फील हॉटनेस एंड सम नर्वसनेस सो इट इस इट इस वेरी सिंपल इट इस वेरी सिंपल सो आई मस्ट से यू क्लैप फॉर योर सेल some some speakers were very fluent, some were not that fluent. It doesn't matter. There is always a next time. Okay. So thank you very much. In my opinion, everyone is a winner. Okay. So don't be mass is nothing. Maybe I, I won't be able to give proper marks because if you are judging so many students and that too everyone is everyone is near to the perfect for uh, for a person who is judging. He may not be very, you know, accurate. I tell you very honestly, because listen, everyone, to keep in mind that who is who is speaking and the number is given. It's very, very tough to just maybe I speak and you just you will give the same marks which I have given you. Okay, different people will give you different marks. So mark and marking is nothing. Fine. So keep it up. Always feel. I always insist that uh, whenever we speak, our appearance, our hairstyle, our dress, everything goes in the oblivion and we make our world image. So better is our vocabulary, the clearer will be our image while speaking. Now, there are about 600,000 usable English words and nobody in the world can know all these words. This is one extremity and the another extremity is that when an adult American comes out of his teaching institutions, he barely learns less than 10 words or animal. It means if we devise an intelligent plan of uh, mastering power words, at least 10 power words per day, it means we are doing in a single day what an average American does in a whole year. Now what are the power words? Power words are hopelessly few. I don't think more than 5,000. For example, if you say he is a moral leper, we should not talk to him, we should not have anything to do with him. And again, a second person says he is a moral leper, we should ostracize him. So here, ostracize is the power word which replaces he, we should not talk to him. We should not have anything to do with him. The single word ostracize replaced 15 words and it has 10 times more impact. So we have to master these power words. And uh, I said that we make our world portrait I remember one event when I was a young child. We used to go to Chhat Taab to see the Chhat festival. So, we were little children. Suddenly a jeep stopped and three, four beautiful girls in jeans came out. All of us were excited to see. 
those days, 50 years back, jeans were very expensive and so we were just excited to know. Suddenly, one of the girls asked, Nadi ya bani sundar hai ke? Then the next girl we went, Haan, hamar wa papa Japan gai le hai thin ne? To huwa se bas go lai le hai thin to ego hamra te dil thi. Just the enthusiasm, the curiosity just 